Getting stronger and smarter through technology, this sci-fi dream is quickly becoming reality. Researchers and developers are driving forth the digital optimization of humans with mind-blowing results. Will we all soon become cyborgs? Today's topic on SHIFT. The cybernetic organism, or cyborg for short, has played a major role in pop culture. For example, in the movie Robocop. A police officer with potentially fatal injuries becomes a super cop with his high-tech implants. Tony Stark from the Marvel Universe can fly in his armor and Superman's colleague Cyborg updates his hardware to gain new powers and skills. These days, even real-life humans enhance their bodies with artificial components. They call themselves cyborgs or biohackers. Neil Harbison from Britain is one of them. He is colorblind and has an antenna that converts colors into sounds. And unlike the human eye, his antenna can even detect infrared and ultraviolet. He has a chip implanted in his head to make this work pretty intense. But actually, there are lots of scientists and companies working on brain-computer interfaces. They allow direct communication between brain and computer. So you can control the device with your mind. But it's not just a gimmick. It can fundamentally improve the lives of people with spinal injuries or neurological disorders. US tech titan Elon Musk is developing a brain-computer interface at his startup Neuralink. The team implanted chips in both brain hemispheres of a macaque, Pager. They then taught him to play a game with a joystick, and his nerve signals were transmitted to a computer via Bluetooth. Pager was fed banana smoothie through a tube as a reward. When the researchers deactivated the joystick, Pager controlled the game with his thoughts alone. The computer had learned to interpret the brain activity. But there are devices that humans can control with the mind even without a brain chip, like bionic prostheses that replace missing body parts. British gamer Daniel Melville even uses one when he plays video games. But prostheses can also give people brand new powers. How would you like a third thumb? This prosthetic thumb makes it possible to do things that usually require two hands. The prosthesis is connected to a wristband with a motor, which drives the thumb. It receives signals via Bluetooth from pressure sensors attached to the shoes. The user can control the prosthesis by moving their big toe. New Zealand-born scientist Danny Clode developed a third thumb in London. She wanted to show that prosthetics don't always have to replace what's missing. They can also provide an add-on, an upgrade. What's fascinating is, after just five days of training with the third thumb, new synapses had formed in the test subjects' brains. And the way they used their normal fingers had changed. There are other developments like this that blur the line between human and machine, sometimes on the skin, sometimes under the skin. It might look like a temporary tattoo, but this is actually a communication interface made from gold leaf. Duo Skin was invented by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. One version works like a touchpad, while another uses near field communication, or NFC technology to communicate with other interfaces. In the future, when you walk into a tattoo parlor, um, you would come out with a tattoo like this. They will not only be very sophisticated technically, but they will become an extension of yourself. Often forget your keys? Eric Frisk can open his door in Sweden with a microchip implanted under his skin. It's the size of a grain of rice and works like a room card in a hotel. It's estimated that 50,000 people around the world already wear one of these implants. They can even be ordered online. The interesting thing is when the chips start getting smarter and start having you know, sensors and things like that. So um, instead of just opening a door, maybe I can have continuously record my, my body uh, temperature, my uh, blood sugar levels, you know, et cetera, et cetera, um, and uh, actually give me useful information about my body. But technology that literally gets under your skin isn't for everyone. Implants are just one way to become a cyborg. There are also robotic suits called exoskeletons. They promise more strength and better agility. 
heavy lifting, uncomfortable work, exoskeletons could someday help people reduce the strain on their backs. Originally developed for medical and military use, they're now increasingly deployed in the automotive industry and logistics. Many see it as win-win. Employees stay healthier and companies profit from the increased efficiency in production. Robotic technology that makes work more ergonomic is under intensive development, predominantly in the US and Germany, but also in China and Japan. We want to create devices that help people in their workplace and to make these tools more accessible and easy to use. I don't think humans will ever become dispensable. There are only a few companies that are designing completely automated systems because they require considerate investment. So I think we'll always have human workers. The exoskeleton created by Japanese company Atoun has been in use for years in production, the care sector, and in Japan's biggest airports. The four and a half kilogram suit is worn like a rucksack. It has a sensor that detects the wearer's movements. So when lifting, two motors in the suit automatically support the user's movement. The motors deactivate when the user is walking. Countries like Japan are increasingly relying on robotics because with an aging population, workforces are becoming depleted. Right now, we mainly make support devices. But in the future, we want to create products that enhance people's abilities and add physical functions, like a third arm. We want to cater to a society in which people of all ages can work without physical limits. And it could get much more spectacular than that. The developers at Arteun have been working for more than 10 years on this mega exosuit called NEO. I was even allowed to try it out during my visit to Japan. I felt like Lieutenant Ripley in the sci-fi classic Aliens with supernatural powers. The developers claim that one arm alone can lift up to 50 kilograms. It's hoped that NEO will soon aid the construction industry or in disaster management. Exoskeletons have a growing role in the medical sector as well. What's special about this model from Japan is that it's controlled by nerve impulses. HAL is its name that stands for hybrid assistive limb. As an ultimate goal, even paraplegics could train with HAL and learn to walk again. My colleague Cassandra Bo went to test the exoskeleton at the company Cyberdyne in Japan. So these electrodes here will detect my brain signals and send it to this machine so that it will move for me. So now I'm going to try to flex and move my arm. It detects pretty well. And now I'm going to try to lock my arm in place and it will still move for me. Did you see that? It's pretty cool. But I do wonder, um, does this kind of, is this safe? Does this go out of control sometimes? No? Awesome. Electrodes translate Cassandra's brain signals into a command for the exoskeleton. Her brain sends the command move to the muscles via the spine. The signal is detected by HAL's built-in sensors. The motor receives a signal and HAL starts moving. This is more difficult for patients with paraplegia because the nerve connections are disrupted. But if there are any remaining impulses, HAL could provide beneficial treatment. Time for a little test walk. Cassandra is allowed to wear the exoskeleton herself. It's attached to a bracket since it's designed for people with impaired mobility. It's a very intimate um, setting. <laughs> it's actually really light. Starting training right now. Okay. I feel a little bit mechanic with my movement. But I think it's just getting used to the machine because now I feel a little more comfortable in it. So now he's increasing the speed. The monitor displays Cassandra and her nerve signals as a waveform. 
HAL works together with other AI systems to analyze the signals and evaluate user data. So, how do paralyzed people actually learn to walk again with HAL? The activation of muscle impulses creates a feedback effect that enables the brain to learn how to make the body walk again from scratch. It's called neural feedback training. It only works for about 20 to 30% of paraplegic patients, but the results are still impressive. So with other exoskeletons, the movements are pre-programmed. So patients wearing the suit will have to rely on it permanently. However, with HELL, it teaches you how to walk again, basically making the connections from your brain to your broken synapses. So basically these patients, they go through the, these trainings and at the end of the training, they're able to walk again without the technology, without the suit. HAL was developed by Japanese roboticist Yoshiyuki Sankai. He is the founder and CEO of Cyberdyne and a professor at the University of Tsukuba. He believes these bionic aids and cyborg technologies are a step into a new age. We're constantly wearing technology, or strongly connected to it. In that sense, we're born cyborgs, don't you think? As technology becomes more accessible, we'll be able to use it without even being aware of it. This phenomenon is the fusion of humans and technology, and this symbiotic relationship will continue to develop. Are we all becoming cyborgs, or are we already? And if the technology becomes available soon, won't people get left behind who don't want to be enhanced or who can't afford it? What are your views on cyborg technology? Is this the chance for us all to upgrade, or are you skeptical? Let us know, for example, on YouTube. There, you'll also find more videos about Elon Musk's Neuralink project and a paralyzed man who controls an exoskeleton with his mind. Take care. Bye.